for me to start. Okay. Okay, thank you. So I welcome you all officially to today's training. Um, as I didn't mention earlier, my name is Anito Fori. I'm the Chief Executive Director for Women for Sustainability Africa. We had an amazing uh, program. We launched Women for Sustainability Africa last week, and it was a great program. We were uh, we had fun. It was very insightful. And uh, we had opportunity to meet great people. Um, I don't think I can forget Grace, for instance. She's always been on my mind, success. And it was really a pleasure meeting all of you, Ruby. And um, today's training is going to focus more on um, Wikipedia, you know, and um, how we can join the Wikimedia movement. And we all know the huge gap that is in there and the great opportunity that Wikimedia poses to have for for women. Okay, so this platform provides us with, you know, the information so that we can all learn and join the, the Wikimedia movement as well. The other movements that we'll be joining. So, but today we are focusing on um, Wikipedia. Okay, and we have Ruby who has been a volunteer for Wikipedia for since um, 2019, if I'm right, Ruby. Since 2019, Ruby has been a great volunteer. She's got a lot of insight. She's built skills, you know, into this. And she has in-depth knowledge about it. And I'm happy Ruby has all these experience and she's ready to share it with us for free at no cost at all. We all know that people will want to charge money to, to learn. And um, I keep saying that today's world is different. It's not like before that you just go through school. You don't need to join any organization. And right after school, jobs are even, you know, ready. And they are even searching for you to rather join the organizations. You are, you are laid with various, you know, organizations. And you even get confused where to join, where, who to work with. But today's world is not like that. You go through school just like that. You come out and there's nothing for you to do. But these platforms provide us with an opportunity for us to build skills, okay? So that even right after school, there's no employment. You can do something on your own. And this ends up empowering you and have letting us, you know, live a sustainable life, which we all look forward to, you know, to, to have. So sustainability is very key in our lives today and even as women. Because, you know, there are a lot of things that we are always at risk. So, you know, let's build skills. Let's empower ourselves. Let's join hands together. And let's grow in this space of Wikipedia. So, Ruby, you know, I won't talk much. Today, it's on you. We are happy to have you. Women for Sustainability is happy to have you. Okay? So, kindly walk us through. And you can tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anita, for the introduction and um, giving me the opportunity to introduce folks, um, especially women, and to the Wikimedia movement. Like Anita said, the gap is wide and it's very, and we're going to learn about all of that and get practical skills on how you can edit Wikipedia and it's a step project, okay? So before we start the practical session, I need to take you to um, some of the concepts behind Wikipedia and why we are doing this, okay? It's very important for you to understand why this is important and why we are all here today. Um, so I wouldn't do a lot of introduction, I I said it all. So let's um, go deep into it. Um, so let, let, let's, let's do a little quiz, okay? So if you know the answer, just put it in the chat or you can unmute and then share. It has to be, we want to have a very int interactive and interesting session. Um, so have you heard any quotes? And I read, imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. Who said this quote? Is it A, B, C, or D? Can we put it in the chat? Is 
Someone says B. B, okay. Sasa says B, Ebuchike says B. <laughs> Who else? Last person. And it's already says B. Okay, you got it right. So Jimmy Wales, who is the co-founder of Wikipedia, actually did say that. So another question, who writes Wikipedia? A, amateurs, B, professionals, C, an algorithm from Google. A, B, or C. Let's do it fast, 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 fast. Let's do some, some quiz. You can unmute and, and just speak. I'll call some people to speak. Gray says A. Ebubochike says I won't go for any. Okay, Ebubochike, tell us why you not go for any. <laughs> Someone says all three. Okay. And which okay, can you tell us why you said you will not go for okay. it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Good morning, once again, everyone. Good morning. I won't go for any because Wikipedia is written by volunteers. Okay. And um, being an amateur, you cannot really write Wikipedia because you have to go for tons of training. Okay. And I don't think it can be also be written by professionals. It can be written by professionals, but you don't have to be professional, professional. Okay. And algorithm from Google, no. Okay. That's why I can't go for any. Okay. That's great. That's awesome. Success still says all. Okay, so um everybody is right. Um, but with Wikipedia, I mean, I wouldn't also go for any because all of these people can write about Wikipedia. Anybody, once you get trained, once you get the skill, anyone can write on Wikipedia. So you don't have to necessarily be a professional, you don't have to necessarily be. Uh, in a particular field, um, all you need is to get the understanding and get trained on how to do that, okay? And your willingness to do it. So what do WikiLeaks and Wikipedia have in common? A, B, or C? Are they, did they share the same co-founder? They share a part of their names. They are both financed by the Wikimedia Foundation. Someone says, Sasa says they are both financed by the Wikimedia Foundation. Grace also says they are both financed by the Wikimedia Foundation. Okay, who else? I wanted someone to give me an, uh, a last answer and then I'll explain. Okay, <laughs> so I would say that uh, maybe A is not the right answer. C is not the right answer because Wikileaks is not a project under Wikimedia Foundation. And maybe what they have in common is the wiki, the fact that you could edit the website, okay? It's an editable website, okay? So they share like the name wiki but they are not the same platform. So how often did you use Wikipedia? A lot of the times, we, sometimes we use Wikipedia, we don't even know, because we are always searching for something and the results that we get, we don't even know or keep track of um, the website that is giving us those information. But if you are keeping track, could you tell us like, um, did you, by chance, use Wikipedia last week. Yes, 
yes or no. Just just type in the chat box. Let's move on quickly, quickly, quickly. Did any of us use Wikipedia last week? Okay, Bube Chike says very often, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I want to ask a question. When we talk about open, what does it mean? What are, when you hear the word open, like what comes to your mind? You can unmute and just talk. Anybody can unmute and say something. Like you don't have to. Okay, Marcelina says to expose something. Good. To open means to have access to something. Opportunity. Wow. I have scholars here. These women are very brilliant. Wow. You're all right. When we say open, some of the, um, I mean, which things that we see around us could be an open book, an open door, open box, or an open refrigerator where you can access something or an open can, or an open eye, okay? So open just means open, something that is open. And um, I'll read a famous quote by one of our um, community volunteers who is Joy. He says, when we open, we are able to break barriers that limit our access to things, resources, and opportunities which benefit us in diverse ways, okay? So all your answers are right. You're talking about open opportunities, having access to something. Because once something is open, you'll be able to assess it. Because without opening the fridge, you will not be able to pick that drink that you want to, um, I mean, you want to drink or you want to take. So open is very important. It exposes you to opportunities or allows you to have access to what you're looking for. So as you're joining the Wikimedia movement or you get into understand what the Wikimedia movement want to welcome you to the world of open because that world is full of open access, open knowledge, open opportunities, okay? So this is what we are going to introduce you to. So for a long time, the word open uh, has existed for a long time. Um, without open or without open knowledge, okay, we wouldn't be where we are today. We wouldn't see the kinds of invention that we are seeing today because these are knowledge that were made available and other people improved upon it. Imagine the Wright brothers who created the first aeroplane didn't make that knowledge available to the world or to other people who learned and improved on it. I don't think we'll see the kind of airplanes that we see today because the kinds of airplanes we see today were far, it's, it's kind of like far advanced from what was built by the Wright brothers who were the inventor, inventors of uh, um, the first airplane, okay? And even with the Wright brothers, they also learned and studied from other inventions because at the time there were um, existing people, human beings were trying to create things that could make us fly in the sky, okay? Like a parachute or a glide, paragliding and, and air, hot balloons and all of those kind of things that could make people um, go into the sky. And so this, they studied from that knowledge. They looked at the bird. How does the bird fly? They, look, they, they looked at how um, a bird flies, try to, you know, put calculations to it to see how they can create um, an airplane. And at the time, it looked so different, like what we are seeing today. And, and it wasn't successful at the first try, but they kept improving it, okay? And today we have this beautiful airplane with all of um, music. We can watch videos and then we can have air condition and it. we can feel much more comfortable than it used to be. And so this all tells us that open knowledge is very important. If you look at the iPhone that you're using or the 
current phone that you're using, you realize that some years ago, this was not the kind of phones that existed. And that also means that that knowledge has been improved because at, at the time it used to be a YAM phone. We, in Ghana, we call it YAM phone, those kind of phones that do not support internet, okay? Because the internet was not even so common at the time. But today we have beautiful phones and every year they are releasing new, uh, <laughs> new models. And that tells us that um, it's very important and that knowledge is being improved every day. We are learning from what existed today and see how we can make it better tomorrow. So that's what open actually um, means. When we open something, it helps other people to improve on the knowledge that has been um, has been existing, okay, to serve our communities better. And I don't know if you've heard about the story of the palm wine. Um, there's this kind of... Um, um story or um, yeah behind this palm wine uh, it was a farmer who was going to a farm and then he saw that an elephant had pulled down a palm tree or something like that and he was like drinking something from it so the elephant was like what is the what is the um elephant drinking like some liquid from this palm tree that was pulled down and when the elephant when the farmer tasted it, he realized that it was sweet. And that was the first time he realized that ah, we could get something sweet from the palm tree. Wow, this is amazing. And so that knowledge was shared. And today we are tapping palm wine. We are using it for different beverages and all of that. It tells us that when we are able to share knowledge, okay, that knowledge is improved and it becomes better. Other people have other ideas on how to even make it better or serve a better uh, purpose, okay? So that's basically um, how it started. Um, let's look at these images here. Aren't they beautiful? Very beautiful. Many a times we want images to do our presentation, to do our work, and sometimes we don't, we are not, in Arizona to have those pictures ourselves. We are not in Antarctica to take those pictures ourselves. But we believe that if others have access to these photos and are able to share it thinly, freely, okay, it helps you, the person who wants to do a research or try to show pictures to have access. Mm. To... Someone is not muted, Anita. It allows you to have access to those pictures without you having to go there or you having to struggle to get those pictures. And, and basically, like sometimes you're doing a research in the northern region, you know, you are in Accra here, maybe you have not had the chance to go there, you're writing a, a research topic on blah, 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 depot rights and all of that across different uh, cultures, you know, and you want pictures to use for your presentation. If all the pictures were copyrighted and you have to go to all the owners, I mean, can you imagine why are you going to find the owners? Tell me, it's so difficult to find the owners of each of the photos to use, to ask permission. I want to use your photo and then they'll say pay something or don't use it, okay? Because of copyrighted. You will not be able to use. And, I, and I'm saying that because um, whenever someone takes a picture, the person owns a copyright to the picture. Until the person says, I'm giving out the picture for free. You don't have the right to that picture. And so um, open allows you to be able to give your pictures for free for others to also benefit from it or use it for educational purposes. So open is very, very important. The world of open is very, very important. So this is exactly why we are here. We are here to make knowledge freely accessible. We are here to make um, images, content freely accessible for educational purposes and for our world, the kind of world that we are living 
today, access to information is very important. If we even want to understand how climate change is impacting women in Sudan, we want to have pictures to understand how that is impacting women in Sudan compared to women in Ghana. Because each of the women in different countries experience climate change differently, okay? So these pictures help us to, to appreciate what is happening in those countries. And imagine if those pictures are not made open, access, you can have access to them freely. We will not be able to even see it till we go there. And how many of us can pick a play or, or have that luxury of time to go there or luxury of money to go there? So, so what, um, our, this is famous quote by letsopenworld.com. It says, an open world begins with an open mind. And I believe that all of us here are here because we have an open mind to learn. We have an open mind to take our skills a step further. So what exactly is open movement? When we say open movement, what are we talking about? So the open movement seeks to provide solutions to the world's problem, pivoting on free access, transparency, and collaboration and reuse. And this is very important. We want to be able to have free access to the information, knowledge, pictures, whatever it is, transparency. Once it's open, nobody's hiding anything from you. You have a transparent world. Collaboration. Collaboration allows innovation because once it's open, it means you're inviting other people to also bring their knowledge, to also bring their wisdom, to also bring their contribution, to help it become better. And Wikipedia started as just one project, but today we have 17 other projects. And this is as a result of collaboration because it was open and a lot of people got into it, were given the opportunity to contribute they were able to create other useful projects that they felt will complement the Wikipedia uh, platform, like Wikimedia Commons and other projects were built as a result, okay? It also allows reuse, because once it's open, other people can use. If someone took a picture, like I said, women experience in, in Sudan or how climate change experiences women in Sudan, I can use that picture once the person has given it's like openly, how has given it out openly. I don't have to reinvent the world. I don't have to travel there to take the picture myself, to own it myself. Because once the person has done it, I've saved a lot of money. I don't need to travel there to be able to access that picture. Okay. So it allows reuse and, and, and also saves us uh, time and money as a result. So there are different types of open. We have open software, open source, open uh, research, open code. There are a lot of open platforms, open, um, talking about alternative forms of licensing um, create by Creative Commons. There are different, different projects that, are, there are even open data that are advancing the cause of open, okay? And some of the famous one that you may know I don't know if you know of Android. Most of us use Android phones and all of that. They are open. It's open, okay? It's not uh, a closed or <laughs> something that is, it, it's free, it's open. Anybody can use Android, okay? We have Lionos, we have Creative Commons, we have Flickr, we have MediaWiki, we have Mozilla, we have Unsplash. So these are some of the open platforms that we currently use there are, there are so many i don't want to go into this but just to give you an idea and the famous one that we have been using a lot is the wikipedia where everybody goes to it i don't think anybody gets to pay a dollar or something to be able to open or unlock wikipedia you know sometimes you use some platforms and then we'll say if you want to get um, this amount of information pay this to unlock it okay if you want this feature pay this I don't think anyone has experienced that using um, Wikipedia. Okay, so Wikipedia 
is one of the famous ones that we see. So Creative Commons um, gave a famous quote. He says, remember, when we share, everyone wins. And that's very true. When we share, because you would have something that I don't have, and I will have something that you don't have. But when we all share, I get, I get to benefit from everything. And you also get to benefit from everything. So isn't that beautiful? When we share, we all win. So we are all here to join in. Okay, this is a first introduction. I hope that you understand what we are when we talk about open movement and all of that. Okay. So I want to ask some few folks here. Um, just open your mic and then just say something to us. In your own words, tell us what the word open movement is. What did we say open movement is? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Should I call out some people? Okay, so I think um, <clears throat> open movement. Your name and then your an opportunity. Okay, I'm Marcelina. Okay. Okay, so I think open movement is an opportunity for us to tap into the knowledge of others and to also benefit from whatever resources we have. Awesome. That's brilliant. Who else wants to say something about open movement? So what categories of open projects is this? So who wants to talk about like the various categories of open projects? We talked about open source data. We I, I touched on, I just mentioned them. We have open data, open softwares, and all of that. What are some of the impacts the open movement had has had in our world today? So what are some of the impacts? They are practical, they are happening around you. Who would want to unmute and then? Abigail. Okay, Marcelina. Marcelina has raised her hand. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think some of the impacts is um, free access to information and being able to share your knowledge with other people and also learning from other people. Awesome. We being able to share information, learn from other people, and we and they also learn it from us. Awesome. Um, who else wants to say something? Okay, so someone should tell us any open project that they are familiar with. SOA, okay, success. Yeah, I think the bigger one is the Wikipedia space that we all enjoy. That's one of it. Okay, awesome. The Wikipedia, we're talking about Lionel. So it's talking about Android, even Mozilla, you know, all the softwares because they are open. Other people collaborate, improve it. And today we are enjoying from it. Okay. So I want to introduce you to the Wikimedia movement. Well, what, how do you understand when you hear Wikimedia, Wikipedia, I know sometimes you, you get confused, but what comes to your mind when you hear Wikimedia? Like, what do you think it is? There's no wrong answer. It's just a uh, expression of mind, okay. And can I try? Yes, try, everybody should try. <laughs> Okay, I'm thinking maybe um getting visual um information on visuals or images on um the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, getting information and visuals on the internet. Okay, that's what you're saying. Yes. 
Okay. Okay, good. Who else wants to try? There's no right. I I think the Wikimedia. Hi, I'm Grace. Um, I think the Wikimedia is also for the I think it's a platform for the creative commons. You know, you have that ability to, you know, share for people to have the ability to get free knowledge. So I, I think that's what the Mickey media space is about. Okay, awesome. So there's no right or wrong answers. Um, so let me introduce you to the Wikimedia movement. Okay, so when we talk about Wikimedia movement, it's actually a global movement. And one of its main or its main purpose is to bring free educational content to the world. So the things that you're seeing on the internet and like Grace said, and like um, Soa said, you know, this is what the movement does, okay? We want to bring free educational content to the world. And it does that through the various Wikimedia projects, individuals like you and I, it does us through organizations and groups like today, Women for Sustainability is doing this, um, is hosting this training, you know. So these are the ways that the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, the Wikimedia movement does or its main purpose. Please don't forget that this is not Wikimedia Foundation as a foundation. When I say movement, it's different from foundation. I'll explain why. Foundation, Wikimedia Foundation is the organization that is responsible for all the Wikimedia projects. And the Wikimedia movement is you and me and the institutions and the organizations and the groups who are advancing this cause. I hope we understand clearly. If you don't understand, let me know. Are we good? Okay. So Wikimedia movement, again, like I said, it's a global movement. So once you become part of this movement, you have joined a global movement. There's Wikimedia all over the world, all over the continent. You get to connect with people in India, China, Singapore, um, Africa, different parts of Africa, Asia, the Americas, so many. The, the ECAP region, so many, so many people to connect with. And so many people who are in the movement helping to promote access to free educational content and making them available to the world. And the Wikimedia Foundation, like I said, is the organization. So just like we have Facebook, we have uh, Facebook has, like, has this, its organization aspect where people work you know, trying to make sure that the platform is good and all of that, doing more of the administrative and, and supporting the community and working with the community to make sure that the community have what they need, you know, is the organization responsible for all those projects? If you don't have, if you don't understand anything, let me know. So um, some years ago, I, I, I only thought about Wikipedia. I didn't know that Wikipedia actually had um, other projects like Wikishnary, Wikicode, Wikibooks, and all that we knew was Wikipedia. If you are here like that, let me know if you thought like, oh, Wikipedia is just the Wikipedia. I, I didn't know Wikipedia has sister project. Just raise up your hands and share your experience. Like, well, well, how did you think around Wikipedia? Okay, who wants to share? Just unmute and share, that's feel free. We are in a learning. Uh, space. Abigail wants to say something. Abigail, if oh, she's sure. nobody's talking, who wants to <laughs> put, put the light on? Grace, you are saying something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was saying that um I mean, we've we've always known about Wikipedia, but 
we we didn't know about the force behind <laughs> you know the whole um organization i would say so mm -hmm. for us I, I think for me i thought wikipedia was an affiliate you know under google so that that's <laughs> what i thought wow it's true a lot of people have those so like wikipedia is from google or google we someone i i was doing a training in a particular secondary school and someone told me that uh, one of the students said wikipedia takes information from google you know it, it tells us that we are all learning i myself i didn't even know you know so i got to to learn about it that Wikipedia actually is, has an organization behind it called Wikimedia Foundation. I didn't know anything of that sort. So Wikipedia is not the only project that exists. It has sister projects. So Wikipedia was the first that came out, but Wikipedia didn't stay alone. It saw the need for other projects. And like I said, collaboration. Once more, a lot of people came in with diverse skills, they develop new projects that they saw as relevant, okay? So now we have the Wikitionary, we have the wiki codes. So Wikitionary is more like a wiki dictionary. We have the wiki codes. It means a wiki that uh, we put codes, codes of notable people, different kinds of codes. So it's focused on codes. Then we have wiki books. Wikibooks, a collection of books that you can use. So if all of, if some of you have uh, Wikipedia, you realize that um, you can have, um, you can have uh, Wikibooks, which gives you access to various um, kinds of books. Then we have the Wikisource. Wikisource too has a way of um, <laughs> documentation of archives or sources that are not in the natural forms like books and all of those things. We have wiki news where we document news that is happening around us. We have wikiversity, those who want to take a particular course. There are people who have taken a course on wikiversity and become experts by just following through the courses that are on wikiversity, okay? We have wiki species, those who love species, animals and all of those things. This is a place to document those who like botany and those kind of courses. Yes, this is a very good platform to document that kind of knowledge. Then we have MediaWiki. MediaWiki is the software that runs all the wiki projects. And then we have Wikidata, linked open data. Like I told you um, last week, if um, we want to have data that is machine readable, then we need to document our information in Wikidata so that my, it, they become machine readable. And Wikidata is linked to all those Wikimedia projects that we are seeing here. So if we build a, a software or an app, we can build it on Wikidata and be able to make it available. Well, as time goes on, we'll learn deep into it. We have Wikimedia Commons, and that's the audio visual repository of all the Wikimedia platforms. So you, you want to see videos, you want to see audios, and all of that, they are put on Wikimedia and then they are used on the various platforms, okay? Um, it might sound a little <laughs> strange, but we'll get into it. Then we have Wiki Voyage. Those who love to document about travels and all of that, Wiki Voyage is a very good place. Those who want to learn about um, new places and all of that, Wiki Voyage is very good. Then we have then we have um, Wikimedia MetaWiki. MetaWiki, we use to document our projects, like what's happening. Like if I want to write, we are doing a, a campaign, we will use it to document. It's like a website thing, like to show what this project is about, blah, 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 blah. You know, so these are MetaWiki. Then Wikimedia Incubator, we acknowledge that there are lots, there are some languages, like for instance, if you want to start a Wikimedia language, okay, it wouldn't come in the surface immediately. So you have a number of articles. I don't know if it's about a hundred articles or so. Okay, so you start in incubator. You start in incubator. So you grow it. It's like nurturing a baby, okay? A baby in an incubator till it's ready for the world. 
So that's where we build all those um, languages or new uh, projects, okay, before they come out. The Wikimedia Cloud Service, then we have the Wikimedia Foundation itself as the organization. Isn't this amazing? Just one project due to collaboration, due to open, due to everyone can be involved. We have so many projects. And I, I, one thing I want to also let you know that you don't have to be doing all of it, okay? Find where your interest lies. For some people, they like the open data, which is the wiki data. So some people, they like videos and audio, okay? So they go and they like to contribute to media, like pictures and all of that. Some people, they like vocational. So you find where your interest lies. Some people, they love the Wikipedia itself. So you find where your interest lies, which of the projects you are most interested in. It can be two, three, or four, or even just one. And then you uh, contribute to it. So like I said, there are a lot of people behind, so many people, thousands of people all over the world contributing to Wikipedia. And every year we have our, our annual um, programs that we attend. We have the, the general Wikimania, which brings together all Wikipedians from all over the world will come and meet at Wikimedia every year. It's a, it's a place to connect with other Wikimedians, learn from inspiring projects that other people are doing. And that also gives you an idea of what kind of projects, as you are acquiring the skill, what kind of projects can you do? Because it's an open space, it allows you to bring your idea, okay? But you need to understand the ecosystem. You need to understand how to contribute. You need to think around it. And, Come up with beautiful projects on your own. So there's also Wiki in Daba, which is a, a meeting of African communities every year, where um, Wikimedians from all over Africa get to meet each other at a particular country. So last year was Rwanda. This year we're going to Morocco. So every year the country changes, um, just like Wikimania. Okay, the last Wikimania was 9, 2019 in Stockholm, but due to the pandemic, um, it was postponed till this year. There's going to be a Wikimania finally. So that's, you meet, get to meet beautiful people all across the world. There are various platforms that, are, um, that you can join, the Telegram platforms where you can get to meet other Wikimedians from across the world. You can learn from what other people are sharing. You can also bring your suggestion. And even if you're having a challenge and you want someone to talk to or to help, once you put it on the page, you get someone who will connect you or help you. So it's a very great place and very collaborative space, very safe space for everyone to, to join. Yeah, very beautiful people. So let's go to Wikipedia the free encyclopedia. I don't know if I have any question now, like after the introduction to Wikimedia, anybody has any question for me? Do I move on? Any question? Not yet. Okay, so let's go to Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. So what is Wikipedia? Wikipedia is a free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. And when we say Wikipedia, we're talking about, it's a two words that have been joined together and that's Wiki and Pedia. So Wiki is basically an editable website. So you see that when you open a, a lot of website organization, well, you can't just go and edit someone's website, okay? But a wiki is a form of website that you can go in there and make changes, edit. And then the word pedia came out of the word encyclopedia. So we all know our traditional encyclopedia in the past. It's a long time I've seen those kind of big, big books, encyclopedias that were launched, okay? So we want, we are basically, that this two words is just saying an encyclopedia that is editable. It's free and it's online. So that means that 
unlike the traditional encyclopedia would get published after every five years, they, they, they'll bring an edition. There'll be scholars who'll be sitting, who'll be spending five years to put together information before they launch the next version in five years, okay? Um, this encyclopedia is doesn't need a um, um, five years launch and all of that. We don't have time for that, okay? This is live. It's happening live as and when it happens. And we, you would understand that there's, there's a difference because, for instance, if the encyclopedia that was launched five years, like let's say two years ago, we are waiting for the next edition in the next three years because scholars are sitting behind trying to put down together. We need the current information. What's happening now, we don't have access to it because that one might have been old. The information, maybe the president at the time has been changed. The minister at the time has been changed. So we will have to wait for the next version before we have access to that knowledge. And maybe by the time the next version will come, that whole thing will be changed again. And so there are lots of challenges when it comes to um, that kind of traditional encyclopedia that we usually had in the past. I, I don't know if they still as in existence, but um, it had a challenge because you would not find all the information you need. Although it was helpful at the time because at the time internet was not so popular, but um, we realized that, look, in this internet day, we can't wait for um, some people to publish in the next two years before we have access to that knowledge, we'll be waiting forever. Okay, so this is an encyclopedia that anyone can edit. So this encyclopedia um, is started by Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger. So um, Jimmy Wales, whilst he was a kid, his mom used to buy him this traditional encyclopedia, but he realized that sometimes information on it were not up to date. You couldn't find a lot of information, but as time goes, went on, um, he partnered with Larry Sanger to come up with uh, a newpedia. The, 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 it was first called Newpedia, okay? So Newpedia was that kind of encyclopedia that's leveraged on the internet, okay? Just like you see on the internet. They wanted to move the encyclopedia to the internet. But with that, they brought um, scholars because that's how an encyclopedia was created. They brought scholars, professors. You didn't have to be like learned knowledge, you know? If you don't have a, a PhD or you don't have publications, you don't meet the, those kind of criteria. And so they try to mimic that model for Newpedia. And it was so difficult because they could only create after some years, they could only create like 20 articles. Because you can imagine bringing professors together. Someone will say this, someone will say that. Someone will say this. By the time they come to a, a conclusion, time had spent, <laughs> time is far gone. Okay, so they came up with just 20 articles. And Jimmy Wells was like, no, this model, we are not going anywhere with this because after several years, we've just come up with 20 articles. So he launched Wikipedia. He decided to use a different model, Wikipedia, and said that this time, you don't have to be a professor. You don't have to be a lecturer. You don't have to have publication. Anyone is welcome to edit. But unfortunately, Larry Sanger was not happy with that model because he felt like, ah, why should anyone you know, contribute to such an encyclopedia? Then it's not a good encyclopedia. If anybody can just contribute to that encyclopedia, it's not a good encyclopedia. So he backed off. And Jimmy Wells, as passionate as he is, went on with his idea and ideology. And today, we have this amazing, powerful encyclopedia as Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay, so these are two friends and one dropped off. But today, have we not seen the success of Wikipedia? It works so well. So then we have millions of articles in different millions of languages. And Wikipedia is providing 
very useful information for our world, very helpful. They are helping students, it's helping um, um, doctors, health workers, it's helping different categories of people, people who want to travel, people who want to um, learn so many. Today we are seeing this amazing and powerful um, Wikipedia. So I mentioned about who owns Wikipedia, the Wikimedia Foundation. So the Wikimedia Foundation is a nonprofit organization. I don't know if my background is noisy. Let me know if it's, it's kind of noisy. Um, it's, it's a nonprofit organization. So just like um, NGOs and all of that, you know, this is a nonprofit organization and it's based in the United States. Uh, someone says all the powerful, <laughs> All the powerful platforms are from the United States. Wow. They're talking about Facebook, Twitter, and all of that. Now we have Wikipedia and all of that. You know, so it's based in the United States. Um, it owns Wikipedia, but what you have to know is that the content is edited and collaborated by volunteers, and no one owns any article. So you can't put an article there and say that I put this article, so I own the article. No someone else will come and utter it. So when you see all these long articles on Wikipedia, don't think it was written in a day. Other people will come and add. Maybe you will start it with a paragraph. By the next week, someone who is interested in that topic would have added another section. And another person would have added another section. Or maybe someone has an, a book or a reference information about that topic and will add to it. And before long, you see that you have a full, um, like a literature review, if you if you are someone who is familiar with literature review, how you know we put all those pieces of information and references from different sources, you you see that Wikipedia works like that, okay? And you see that um, before long, we've had all of these um, information from different different places coming together beautifully to form a beautiful um, write up about the topic. Isn't that wonderful? That's the power of collaboration, because um, in our local dialect, we say uh, knowledge is not in one person's head. <laughs> so what exactly is the vision of Wikipedia? Or Wikimedia, vision of Wikimedia. So the vision of Wikimedia, we learned about with all the Wikimedia projects, when we say Wikimedia, okay. So the vision of all of this project that we are talking about, that's the Wikimedia, the whole ecosystem, okay, is to imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all human knowledge. That's our commitment. And that's the reason why we are here, okay? We want to be able to make sure that everyone can freely share in the knowledge that everyone has. So we are saying that you have a knowledge, share it. If you have a knowledge, share it. Let's learn about your, let's see how cultures differ from countries to countries, okay? From, cult, from groups to groups. How is even talking about traditional marriages? Every country, every um, ethnic groups, have the way that they conduct their traditional marriages. And by sharing it, we get to understand that, okay, these people do it this way and these people do it this way. And every country have the way they understand. In some countries, you don't greet someone with your hands raised. It's disrespectful. But would you know if that knowledge is not shared? Okay, you get to that country and you are waving. And then before long, you are arrested and you are in tr into trouble. Why? Because you didn't know that knowledge. You didn't have that knowledge before going to that country. And so it's a, knowledge sharing is very important and very powerful. For instance, you are going to a particular country. Do you think you just pack your bag and go? Because, of, because knowledge is important, you want to go to the internet and learn about how they do things. How do they behave? How is their weather like? So that you can know the kinds of clothes to pack in your luggage and send it. Without that knowledge, you go ignorantly, you may fall into trouble because there might be some places that you're not supposed to go. You will find yourself there and find yourself into trouble. 
So knowledge sharing is very important. It's very, very important in our world today. And that's the commitment of the Wikimedia. That's our vision of the Wikimedia movement, okay? To make sure that everyone can benefit from all the knowledge that is available in our world. So what is our mission? Our mission here is to empower, engage people, to collect and develop educational content under a free license or in a public domain and disseminate it effectively and globally. I don't know if you got it, okay? So we want to empower. And one of the ways to empower is to train, bring people to that understanding. Give people that skill, give people that opportunity for their voices to be heard, okay? So empowerment is very important is one step. And that's the reason why we are here. We are here to make sure that you here are empowered because once you understand how the module work, once you understand the ecosystem, you become empowered, okay? If someone have a very secret information about you, the person has power. That's how powerful it is, you know? I mean, she's saying uh, people, <laughs> sometimes someone have, like, you know, you watch these movies and it's like, maybe the guy, um, the man maybe, you know, maybe bought something for the girlfriend, you know, he had a wife. And, you know, because that girlfriend feels like, oh, he has that knowledge that he's cheating, he, you use it to manipulate the guy that, oh, if you don't do this for me, I'll tell your wife. If you don't do this for me, I'll tell your wife, you know? So knowledge is power. Once you like, you have, or maybe someone has seen the guy with, with the lady and then he's like, oh, don't tell my wife, don't tell my wife. Because that person has that information about you, he becomes powerful or she becomes powerful, okay? He has that power over you. So knowledge is power. Once you understand the ecosystem, the Wikimedia ecosystem, you, are, you have the right skills or training, you realize that you become empowered. Oh, sorry. Okay. If you have any questions, just leave them in the chat box. So we want to engage people, like we're engaging you, to collect and develop educational resources. So together, we're going to collect educational resources, educational content, and make them free and accessible to the world in an open license and disseminate it effectively and globally. So using Wikipedia platform is very powerful. It's a global platform. That's why you see um, these artists, you know, famous people, they want an article on Wikipedia, okay? It's as bad as that. Everybody wants to be on Wikipedia, reaching us left, right, center. Businesses are reaching us left, center because it's a global platform. It's a platform that increased visibility, okay, in a global world. Um, there was a musician that was like, hey, when they travel abroad and then someone asked them, who are you? They said, you're a musician. Blah, blah, blah. Then they say, immediately they go on Wikipedia to see if their name is there. If they don't see their name is there, they say, oh, they are not any important musician. They are not notable enough. That's why they are not on Wikipedia because they believe that if you are a notable person in your country, you should be on Wikipedia. So if you are not there, they don't really trust what you're saying. And, then, and one journalist reached out to us that he had had a big contract just because someone found him on Wikipedia. Had it not been that he was on Wikipedia, he wouldn't have had that contract, okay? They could see that, oh, this person is credible. They could verify him because he's on Wikipedia. And so they, they, were, they felt like, well, he's a trusted person. Once he's on Wikipedia, we can deal with the person. So they gave him a huge contract, a lot of money. So there are, there are a lot of benefits that uh, it brings to our world. It brings to our countries, our communities, and all of that, you know? And we have even done, um, I think there are projects with different, different institutional organizations to project, you know, cultural uh, heritage information, stories, indigenous stories, and, and, and document all of these stories on the, on the global platform and it's a star project.
So also know that every content available on the Wikimedia, Wikipedia platforms um, are available to the public for free. And it uses Creative Commons license. So one day we'll learn about what Creative Commons is. Creative Commons is a free open, um, it's like alternative form of license. You know, every work that you create, once you create it, it's automatically copyrighted. The fact that we are always picking people's pictures left, right, center, and throwing it about left, right, center, that mean, doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Nobody is worrying you because nobody has time to worry you uh, to, 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 to maybe disturb you. But imagine if you are Mark Zugabet, who picks someone's picture randomly and use they will come after you because they know that Facebook have millions of um, dollars that they could sue you and get money. And that's what they do. If you look at today, they said they've sued Twitter, 9 billion. They've sued Facebook, 25 billion for something like little, little things, little, little bridges. So those organizations need to be careful and make sure that whatever that they are doing is abiding by the law, okay? But me, if I take someone's picture, nobody is coming after me because they don't have time. I don't have the 9 billion. <laughs> I don't have the 9 billion to give to anybody. So it will be just a waste of effort and time. But the fact that we are doing doesn't mean it's right, okay? Um, make sure that whatever info content that you're using is before you use it, check the license. And there are books that are under open license. There are books that are still copyrighted. So they'll tell you this book is, is under strict copyright. You cannot use it. You cannot modify it. You cannot use any aspects of it. But Creative Commons licenses have various um, alternatives for you. So you need to look at uh, which way you can use it. So under Creative Commons licenses, Wikimedia platform adopts the CC by SA, share alike. It means that you can feel free to use any of the content. You can feel free to share it as it is. Uh, you can feel free to add to it or modify it in the way that you want. Okay. I have seen some media houses publish a, a whole Wikipedia article. They just pick the whole thing and they publish it on their website. And Wikipedia will not do them anything because already their content is free and open. Okay. So they are allowed. But if it was copyrighted, then it would have become an issue. They could have been sued. But all the content on Wikipedia are under free license. So Wikipedia have different um, uses. So we have the content that is put on it. We have people who are writing the content. So all the things that you see on Wikipedia, they didn't just pick them from Google and then just put it on Wikipedia just like that. No, that's not how it works. Okay, there are human beings who are writing on this platform. Isn't that wonderful? They are writing in their indigenous languages, in different languages, in English, and so on and so forth. And then we have the readers, those who are reading the platform. Like for me, for a long time, I was a reader of Wikipedia. I only go there to look for information that's important to me. Because at the time, I didn't know that there were people who actually write on Wikipedia until 2019. That was the first time I, I even got to know that ah, people actually were behind this Wikipedia thing writing. Okay, I thought it was like some scholarly work, like some professors who have put down these things and, and, and put it somewhere and it's there. I didn't know that every day people are writing on this platform. <laughs> and I didn't even know that there's a whole community, society behind it. You know, the Wikimedia movement itself. And the whole world is also making use or have access to this platform to, to use freely. Okay, so this is just like an idea to help you to understand how the, the various categories of people that use Wikipedia or contribute to Wikipedia. So I've talked about the history, I will not go there. So these are the traditional encyclopedia. You see, these are how they look like. I don't know if you've not seen it before. This is how they look like. And so they'll publish versions by version. 
today there's this version five. They, have you seen they've labeled it number one, number two, number three, number four. So they keep coming. And these professors will be spending like three, three years trying to document it and publish the next version the next year. So uh, it was kind of like, and, and also once these professors are not coming from the whole world, don't you think that information on these encyclopedia will be about a section of the world, depending on what the professors are interested to write? In. So it doesn't even necessarily allows everybody's information to be available on the encyclopedia. If they feel like that information is not important to them, it's not going to come on the encyclopedia. So it's also like has its own limitation. But now that we have a Wikipedia, we have different information. We can have information about the culture of Indonesia. Even talking about Ghana, we have Ewe. You can, we can assess information about the Ewe tribe, the Ewe, Ewe tradition, you know, the Ga tradition, the Akan tradition, you know, about Nigeria. The different traditions can have a voice. They can document it, the indigenous languages. So there are five pillars of Wikipedia. Please pay attention, okay, before we delve deep into how Wikipedia works. There are five pillars of Wikipedia. First of all, what you need to know is that Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. That's the first thing. So it is not uh, a PR document and all of these documents or these blog bloggers that have been writing in a in a very in a, in a kind of tone that is like marketing tone. It's not that kind of um, public uh, website. Okay, it's an encyclopedia. So Wikipedia is written from a neutral point of view. So when we say Wikipedia is written from a neutral point of view, don't bring your emotions in it, okay? Don't bring your perception because you don't like Shatawale or because of the recent um, Yvonne Nelson and Sarah Cordier's issue, you had some deep sentiment or some regrets for Sarah Cordier because of that, you're going on Wikipedia to go and express your emotion on Wikipedia. Sarah Cordier did that, that, that. No, it's not written like that, okay? We don't have uh, personal opinions. You have to write it from a neutral point. What is the fact? And that's all it cares about. You write it from a neutral point of view. Then, Wikipedia is free content that anyone can use, edit, and distribute. Also know that anyone can edit. So the fact that you started an article doesn't mean that the article is for you. So nobody should edit that article. By the time you come, someone has improved it. Someone has made some changes. Someone has added to it, okay? Anybody can use it and anybody can distribute it. They can share it with other people. Other people can also make use of it. Wikipedia's editors should treat treat each other with respect and civility. The first time I was in a Wikipedia class and I heard this, I was like, ah, well, why? What is this? Are they fighting? What is it? There's no fight, okay? But sometimes when you add, um, I remember my colleague at the office, he wanted to improve an article. And so he added some information about the article and went to pick it from a particular website. And when he published, he thought, oh, he had done some edit. And then someone came to pull it down and said that the website that he got that information was not a credible website. And he felt so angry because he wished that, ah, why, why are you saying that the website is not credible and all of that? You see, in that instance, you can go and type something and make the person feel bad that, what do you mean? What do you mean? Why, why are you doing that? Okay. But no, don't go in that approach. Okay. Because sometimes you feel like, ah, your effort has gone waste. Just ask the person, oh, please, may I know why you reverse this edit? Then the person will tell you, oh, this website has been tagged for or, or blacklisted for fake news. Okay. So sometimes that's what happens. And don't think that there are a lot of people on Wikipedia, there are a lot of administrators behind Wikipedia making sure that the information that is serving the world are credible. So the fact that anybody can edit doesn't mean that you can just come and put anything on it and then it will just go. No, there are administrators behind it who are also 
um, monitoring the platform to make sure that we are serving the world with credible information. And as you begin your editing journey, you will be seeing um, some of these editors and, and administrators will message you, you know, maybe if you do a, a, a good job, they can send you a badge and all of that, you know. And like I said, all, any contribution or any edit you make on Wikipedia, it's in your account forever and ever. So once a Wikipedia, always a Wikipedia, your edit is credited to you and you will be able to have access to it. So Wikipedia has no firm rules. So there's no like some rigid rules and regulation, but we have like this, the foundation of writing on Wikipedia. Make sure that you're writing from a neutral point of view. You are not using words, emotive words, like um, he's the best, he's the worst, you know, those kind of languages on an encyclopedia, like I said, we, we don't use those kind of um, words, okay? He's the best, he's the worst, you know? those kind of things we don't write on an encyclopedia like that he is a footballer and that's it don't say he's the best footballer but if you want to say he's the best footballer, then maybe you can say according to fifa 2022 this this person was agile the best footballer in the world okay that way we know that we are talking about a publication from fifa we are making reference to something and it's not our personal opinion but personal opinions are not allowed. And make sure that whatever that you're writing on Wikipedia has a reference. It has a reference. So Wikipedia is not a place for writing novel information, like a novel research, something that you are now going to explore. Has it been published? If it hasn't been published, we can reference it. But if it's not published, we cannot put it on, on Wikipedia. And also talking about publication, it needs to be published from uh, a credible source, okay? Credible source. So we are not talking about Amea Debrez. Mention the, the, <laughs> those blogger sites in your country that likes to promote fake news and all of those clickbait information. You know, we are not talking about those kind of the, uh, something something.com and those kind of things, you know? We are, we are looking at credible websites like CTFM, Joy News, Graphic Online, okay? We believe that these people are more like the credible website in Ghana. If, you are, if something had happened right now in Ghana, that's, you know, people are afraid of, or, or like some strange thing has happened. Which site will you believe the information? When you see it on Joy News, you have some faith that oh this thing is real if you see the graphic online it's real but if you were only seeing it on um this this dot com this that dot com and you're not seeing it graphic is not saying anything about it joy is not saying anything about it all of these things are not saying anything about it you even doubt it tell me if i'm lying you would doubt it okay so these are some of the the things so what are some of the perceptions that people have had about Wikipedia? What are some of the perceptions that people have had about Wikipedia in one sentence? Can, can anybody share? What are some of the perceptions your teachers have told you about Wikipedia? Just unmute and, and share your information. What are some of the perception people have had um, about Wikipedia? Um, you, can, you can leave it in the chat or you can unmute. If you've heard any myth about Wikipedia, what's the popular thing you've heard about Wikipedia from your lecturers and all of that? Okay. Yes, the most famous of it all. Thank you, Sasses. It says that Wikipedia is not a credible source of information. I love the way you put it. And that's exactly the way that our lecturers always put it. They say Wikipedia is not a credible source of information. This is a popular myth. And 
all the teachers that keep coming, they've passed it on without any proper understanding. And they keep passing it on generation to generation. So they also tell their students, it's not a good source, it's not a good source. So don't use it, don't use it, you know. And without any understanding, that myth has been in our system for long. And not just in Ghana, not just in Africa, globally, okay? Because educators saw um, the Wikipedia as a threat rather than an opportunity, okay? Because students will copy Wikipedia because when the teacher asks them, go and do a research and they found that Wikipedia has done a whole research on this topic. They just go and copy it and paste it and they send it to the lecturer. And then let, let teachers get angry like, ah, why are you copying from Wikipedia? And so they felt like, ah, Wikipedia is making students work e easier. And so don't use Wikipedia and those stuff. And one of the things, the mistakes that the students do was instead of sourcing the references in the article, they were sourcing Wikipedia because they felt like they got all the information of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not a source. It's not a source of any of the information. Okay, I'm clarifying today. Wikipedia is not a source. It's only an aggregator and a hoster of this information. It's hosting the information, it's an aggregator, bringing different pieces of information together to form as one. Okay, so if you look at Wikipedia, you realize that it has a lot of reference. You can have a whole article with so many references. So it's aggregating information from different angles. People are contributing from different angles and then it forms a beautiful piece like a literature review. So Wikipedia is not an aggregate. It's not a source of information. It's only an aggregator of information. And before you put anything on Wikipedia, we always need to do our checks well. We need to consider the source. Like I told you, where is that information coming from? You want to update an information, maybe the president of Ghana, they said, oh, maybe after uh, Nana Kufado's term, Mahama is now the president. We need to update that information. The current president of Ghana, we need to check where is the source coming from? Because at, at that point, a lot of people want to write different, different, different things. So we make, need to make sure that it's coming from a credible source. Aside that, we need to check the author. Checking the author is very important. Who is the one writing? Because there are some authors, they are known to try to uh, manipulate people's emotions online, okay, by writing different stories, trying to twist the story, trying to twist things. They are just known for that, okay? Uh, haven't you seen people who are known for maybe something is happening in a particular country, you know, where bring some pictures, old pictures of some war, then we'll bring it that this is happening now. When you read further, only to realize that someone will comment and say, this picture was two, like 10 years ago war that happened. And the person is trying to manipulate people's feelings to think that it's happening now in Nigeria or in, 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 in Kenya or in some country, okay? So there are those kind of authors. They are just known to bring out fake news. You also need to check the dates because when Ekofado was made president, that information was published in a particular year. And so when you, you bring out that information and say that ah, Ekofado is now the president of Ghana. Meanwhile, it was Mahama who has now won the president. You need to go and read beyond and check that, ah, this date for this publication that I'm using that says it's Ekofado was published four years ago. So this is not a current information to use, okay? So look at the dates because information is always involved. Even research is always involved. Every day we are finding new things. So the, what might be true 10 years ago might not be true now. What we couldn't find cure for five years ago, today we have cure for it. So look at the date and then make sure that um, you are referring to the right thing. Check your biases. Make sure that, you know, <laughs> consider that your own beliefs could affect your judgment. You see, sometimes because you want Maham Ekufado to win, so you are pushing for, you are looking for an 
at a publication that backs your own biases. Haven't you experienced that before? Because you like someone, you're always looking for the publications that will back your, your biases or your judgment. Okay, so when you see other ones that are there, you say, no, you are still digging down to find the one that will suit your, your, your biases or your beliefs. Okay, so you need to wait and put that aside because this is not a, a, a publication. This is an encyclopedia we are talking about. And it's also important to read beyond. So check other sources. Make sure that the information is, is, is similar, okay? If it's totally different from another website, then you realize that no, then there's some someone is making a mistake or someone is trying to portray something else. So make sure that you read beyond and have supporting sources. So you can have two references back in your statement. It doesn't have to be just one. You can, you can see that, oh, there are other sources, you know, that are, that can be used to support it. And also check that it's not a joke because there are some people who are known for publishing jokes and all of those kind of things online to get people to laugh in the end. One day I was reading a story, I was so emotional, only for me to read the last end and it says, in a dream. I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, I read the whole thing feeling so emotional. It's like the way it was written, you keep reading, you keep reading and it's like, what happened? And all of that, only for you to get to um, the bottom and then it says, and I woke up from the dream. And I'm like, ah, it's not even real. <laughs> so make sure that it's not a joke and ask experts if you're in doubt, you can check fact checking sites or librarians, check, out, check from other people who are also in that field. Maybe you don't understand something in the science field and all of that you can ask and then um they can help you okay is there any other question any other question Yes, please. I have a question, Ruby. Okay. Can I just ask? Um, this is success, by the way. Okay. So my question is now, um, Wikipedia is open access. Okay. So anybody can just type in something, and anybody can, you know, review. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then their references, their names are at the bottom of the piece of information that they put out there. So why can't we, we have uh, such a system where? All of those people can come together and write the template and have it reviewed before it is published on the Wikipedia space. That way, it's a bit coordinated for me because, um, again, we're saying that people write information about things that they know. Maybe it's their culture or something, and uh, someone else wants to write in the same space. They could just meet write the piece, get it edited, get it approved, get it reviewed, and then you know, you can then publish it. So that is that is one one question that baffles my mind. Maybe that would that would kind of dissolve the myth about the credibility of Wikipedia. Again, uh yeah, so that's the first question I've forgotten the answer to maybe when I remember yeah. I'll I'll ask them in the chat box. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so let me uh, address that thank you so much for that important question. That's a very brilliant question. So Wikipedia, Wikipedia, like I said, um, is open, collaborative, anyone can edit. And that's the challenge that a lot of people have because they feel like, why should anyone edit? Then there'll be a lot of problems in the platforms and all of that. But what people don't see is that there are a lot of reviewers behind the platform. So it's not just like, oh, everyone is editing and putting something in there so you can just get away with it, okay? There are people who are administrators. So as you begin to um, be in the Wikimedia movement, you realize that um, there are lots more administrators, that, like a lot. And even now, they've gone beyond just having human administrators or reviewers. We now even have bots, you know, robots that can detect or try to check 
because the, like the, the rate at which information is being produced these days is beyond the human uh, abilities, okay? People are even creating um, tools that can enable us to edit faster, okay? <laughs> or improve the content very faster. There are tools, a whole lot of tools. Um, I'll introduce you to some of the tools that can let you get uh, quick edits. They are very easy ways because they've enabled that. And all of these tools are improving the content, improving the information that are on Wikipedia on different projects. So it's true that uh, we need to get a team that has to review it before it goes out. But that was the model of Newpedia. Okay, Newpedia wanted to bring people together, review, let's sit down, make sure that before this thing is, goes to the Wiki, Newpedia, we need to review it, check it before we put it there. And they got 20 articles, like in, in a year or something, they, only 20 articles were published. So I was like, hey, if 20 articles have been published a whole year or two years, then when are we getting there with a the lot of information that keep coming every day, the lots of happenings that keep coming, that model, will make us lag behind. The world has far transformed. And thankfully we have tools, AI tools that are enable us to do our work faster and more easier. The way that you would have manually, you know, improved content on Wikipedia, they've changed, okay? Now there are tools that can allow you to um, search for articles, let's say contents on Wikipedia articles that needs like additional references and all that you do is look for those references and add them or if they that you find a reference that you think oh maybe this information is outdated you can you can update it okay because as information is growing we need to keep updating a lot of things are changing we need to keep updating let's say the student population university of ghana last year was ten thousand. this year is twenty thousand. that information needs to be updated it doesn't mean that it's wrong it was correct at the time but today it's no more correct. But should we have a committee to now bring University of Ghana lecturers or professors to come and verify? No, that's why we are saying that the publications that are done from credible sources are our are the places where we can verify. So these are the tools that we use to verify. And these are the tools that the boards are using to, to make sure that the information is credible. These are the tools that um, administrators are using, okay? There are tools that administrators are using to check that information that you are putting on the platform is verified, okay? Like I, like I told you, a colleague of mine did some change. It was reversed because they saw that the, the reference that he used was not a credible reference. So to them, they felt like um, that information could not be entirely true or could be altered. So uh, there are really, really so many administrators. <laughs> there are so many administrators reviewing the platform. That's why Wikipedia has really stood the test of time. It has become like that kind of um, place that people use to verify information. Okay. Have you remember the second question? Should we move on? Yes, please, let's move on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the awesome response. Okay. So like I said, Wikipedia is not a commercial tool. It's not a PR tool. Um, you don't require any special access to it. You can access it. Unlike a conventional encyclopedia, it covers live events or occurrences. So we are editing live things that are happening now. We are editing it. And it's... It's not proprietary, okay? It's not proprietary. So these are the basic um, things that we have to know that P it's not a PR tool, those kind of um, publications that for commercial purposes to marketing or marketing purposes, that's not how it works. So let's look at the gaps. What gaps are we looking at? If you look at all of these, um, Globe, if you look at all of these countries, see where the editing are coming from. If you look at this side of the continent, you know, they are the most contributors. See where the, the most contributors are coming from. A lot of contributors are coming from this region, this region, and this region, and that region, at least they've tried. But when you come to our own Africa, 
see how pale it looks. And I mean, for some countries, there's no edits at all. When you look at the gray areas, sorry, sorry. When you look at the gray areas, there's no, at least Ghana, we are trying, Nigeria is trying, but we are not there yet, you know? So these are between one and 10,000 edits. They are coming from some parts of Africa, you know, some parts of Africa. Then between 10,000, 50,000, you'll see this region like South Africa and all of these Northern African countries. Then you see where the deep red colors are. These are the gurus editing and writing about everybody's story. So they said African story must be written by the African people. And even amazingly, you see that some of the stories in Africa have been written by people from the West, not even Africans themselves. And so we want to change the narrative. And that's why empowering Africans to be able to document their story is very, very important. Okay. Document their story is very, very important. So we have a lot of work to do. Africa needs more editors, more contributors to be in that space. And let's go to the gaps that we are seeing on the platform. So Wikipedia is written in different languages from English, uh, Cubano, Swedish, you know, see all the languages, English, Cuban, cu cu eh, Cebuano, hmm. Swedish, the blue one, then German, you know, French, Dutch. So you see, these are the major languages, but there are a lot more languages, but there are smaller, smaller, smaller indigenous languages, millions of them that are also being, thousands of them that are also being documented on the platform. But the major ones are what have been shown to us, English being a lead in all of that. So, um, in all of these articles, we have about 55 million, um, 15,180 articles in different languages as of 2020. Okay, now there are a lot more languages, new languages have joined. Um, if you look at Wikipedia editors, look at the people that are writing on Wikipedia, we realize that 90% of them identify as male. That means that a lot more women uh, who are not in the space contributing. And why is that so? Why do we keep seeing women are not interested when it comes to editing Wikipedia? Well, we look at maybe other platforms, Facebook, to edit, and TikTok and all of those. And women are there. We want them to, an encyclopedia. The women are not interested. We can even see from today's training, they're not really like, taking opportunity or advantage of the space. <laughs> okay, so um, you realize that 9% are also um, females and only 1% is, let's say a different group of people, right? We talk about transsexual, transgender groups and all of that. So these are the, the variety of people, or category of people that is this in the Wikimedia ecosystem, okay, in terms of gender. So, what, so the gender gap, and one of the reasons why we're encouraging more women to be here, you know, the gender, gender gap is real. When we talk about gender gap, we're referring to the numbers between male and female editors. It's, it, it's glaring, it's, it's so clear as we have seen in the past. And there was some research that was done um, somewhere in 2020, thereabouts. And they found out that the gender gap between male and female, this, this was how huge they are. So let's say male between the ages of 18 to 21 years, this is how the gender gap is so wide. So you find a few more women, a lot more male. So across the various category of age group, the male still dominated. And you realize that the younger folks at least have more, a little more women. But when you come to the middle age, there's still a lot of <laughs> there's still a lot of men who are still dominating the space. 
Now let's go to different age group categories. And it's like it's cut across. You have, depending which, whatever the age group is, you see that a lot more males are dominating the space and just few women are in the space. And this is not good enough. And when you look at, let's say that what, what's, what are some of the trends that we are seeing? Doing some in comparison, there are more biographies of men than women on English Wikipedia. And why is that so? Because there are more males who are interested to write about their fellow males. And that's not supposed to be the issue, but it's an internal bias, naturally. Because if you're a woman, there are things that you naturally like to do. Then things that you naturally like to read about, which is different from uh, a male. Okay, so they are, the males, they like to watch sports. They like to talk about football. They like to talk, research about their fellow men. They like to read about their fellow men more. And so you see that their interest and contribution on the Wikimedia platform is skewed towards that direction. And when it comes to uh, women, women do like women stuff. So we are, we are saying that, well, if that's the case, then it means that if we are able to bring more women, we will be able to see some kind of content that we don't see on Wikipedia platform. Because then the whole content that we are seeing now could be influenced by systematic bias. And systematic bias, the fact that we have more males. So we are, it's, it's kind of reflecting the, the things that they are interested about. Because as Wikimedia volunteers, you have the liberty to write about anything that you're interested in. Okay, nobody is putting a gun on you to write about this thing or write about that thing. Unless you are joining a campaign that has a theme, you have the liberty to still choose what um, topic you want to write under the, the theme of the campaign. Okay, so um, when you look at the biographies of women scientists, they are, they are of lower quality on average than a Wikipedia article as a whole because the male are not interested to write. Because we have few women, their efforts too will not be that much, okay? So they don't care about the women biographies. But if you look at the male scientist biography, you see that there's so much information. Okay, so these are some of the kind, kind of um, reflection that are happening. And you can have some time to read. We'll make sure that we share the slides with you and you can have a read about all of this, the things that we are seeing, the trends that we are seeing as a result of the gender gap that uh, exists in the Wikimedia ecosystem. So some people did some research and they discovered some of the reasons why they they, they realize that women don't edit, but well, it might differ from women to women, what exactly they are so interested. But some women don't edit Wikipedia because they feel like the interface isn't sufficiently user-friendly. Like you find Facebook has that kind of like interface that is, you know, when you go to Facebook, a lot of women, even I'm sure there are more, we are yet to see the statistics, but I'm sure that there are more women than male. So some women don't edit Wikipedia because they are too busy. And some women don't edit Wikipedia because um, they aren't sufficiently self-confident, okay? So we want to make sure that you have um, confidence. And that's why it's important to understand this ecosystem and, and get the necessary skills that you need. Um, some women don't edit Wikipedia because they are, uh, conflict averse and don't like Wikipedia sometimes, um, flitty culture. Well, that's what some people think in some part of the world. And some women don't edit Wikipedia because the information they bring to Wikipedia is too likely to be reversed or deleted. Because so they feel like, oh, why would I edit something and you delete? It's not always the case, okay? Make sure that you're backing it with credible information. But those kind of experiences sometimes maybe make people shy away you know, women, we like to be in our space. We don't like to hurt anybody. And some women don't edit Wikipedia because they find it overall atmosphere mis misogynistic. Hey. <laughs> okay, so these are some of the few reasons that women don't edit. I want us to wrap up straight and get to the point. 
um, you have some time to read more into it. And why is it important to encourage women in Wikipedia? We want you to help us, like, it will help improve the quality of information. Okay, it's open doors to more groups or improve the process and systems, better organizations, stronger community. And there are a lot of benefits for being a Wikimedia contributor. Okay, we even, even it will even improve um, images that we see. Okay, there are images that you would want to do, like share to Wikimedia platforms that maybe a, the males may not be interested. So it gives us variety of information um, to, to share. So it also promotes a better world and society. It's the right thing to do. Of course, one of the reasons why you should be a Wikipedia editor is that it's the right thing to do. And you can contribute in various ways. You can contribute in your language, contribute in specific topics, um, you can use it as a classroom assignment. So we have Wikimedia education projects where we work with schools and teachers to put information on Wikipedia as part of the assignment and improve the quality of articles. It helps to improve reading and copy editing because it helps people to read through the content that's on it and edit. So there are some people, the only <clears throat> thing they do on Wikipedia is to edit the English or edit the language, okay? And that's the, they get their edits. So maybe they read something and then there was an air somewhere that is not supposed to be there. They will just correct it. And that's an edit. That's the, the way they like to contribute. Some also contribute in terms of photography and all of that. So there are lots of benefits of contributing to Wikipedia. It helps you to learn how to write in an encyclopedic way. It broadens your knowledge. It gives you that skills of writing in an encyclopedic uh, tone. It helps to preserve languages on the internet. It's an opportunity to share your work, your knowledge to the world, and helps you augment biases that contribute to colonize world web. Because as we see that on the internet, there are lots of biases on the internet. Information about Africa is scanty, and so this platforms allows you to also project information about your culture, your country, the things that you love on the web. And there are lots of benefits that volunteers have gained as Wikipedia. Some have gotten like opportunities, recommendations just by volunteering because these, these um, ways of contribution don't go, you know, are no waste. They are no waste of your time. Okay. Someone, some people got there was a one of our community members, he got a PhD straight. He did he was just telling me he got a PhD straight because he had published some articles on Wikipedia and they felt like, oh, he has done some publications. Right from you know, undergraduate, he's got a PhD in the university. And there are many more community members who have gotten scholarships to study abroad just because they said they were. Um, Wikipedia contributors. So it can open different doors. There are people who are now working in Wikimedia communities. It has opened job opportunities. It has opened so many different doors. So just find your niche. And some people have gotten access to, to start developing their own projects, okay? So there are a lot of opportunities that you can get by being involved in the community. So please take advantage. There are travel opportunities as well. So I've made sure that I've put um, a lot of information, resources that you can read about in the slides. So um, let, let's go and explore the Wikipedia interface. So if you have a, if you're on the website, let's go to Wikipedia. And let me show you how you can edit in, in, in a snapshot. Okay, so we'll be finishing, we'll be wrapping up soon. So when you go to Wikipedia, this is how, can you see my interface? If you have any question, you can leave it in the chat. Now address it. I want to welcome one of our, um, our gurus in the movement, Pamela. Pamela is here. Can we hear your voice? <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I see you in the, in the group. Pamela, you're welcome. So Pamela is joining us from the United States. He's also uh, one of the Wikimedias who have been promoting women agenda, empowering women to join the Wikimedia space because 
Yeah. So Pamela, yes. just, just say hi to us and tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, hello, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, sorry for my voice. It's dawn here, so. <laughs> I um, so I am Pamela and um, part of the media movement. Um, I won't talk much, maybe after the presentation, and if I have something to say, I would like to share it with everybody. Okay, so Pamela wants to talk to us after the presentation. Thank you so much, and welcome all of you who just joined once again. So like we've learned, learned so much about what Wikipedia is, what is not, why how we can write on this so when we zoom into practically when we go on wikipedia how do we write on wikipedia so i'll show you practically how to write on wikipedia and practically how to write on wikidata okay so you see that when you open wikipedia there are so many these are the language wikipedia so if you want looking for a particular language and you're not finding it you enter it in this box so we have akan wikipedia ewa wikipedia gan wikipedia and so on and so forth but i'm going to open the English Wikipedia. So as you can see, English Wikipedia, it says it has um, 6,688,000, 6,668,000 articles at the moment and still counting. So every day it keeps improving, okay? So let's open Wikipedia. So when you open Wikipedia, this is how the interface look like, okay? So whenever you join Wikipedia or open Wikipedia and want to edit an article, you can edit existing articles. So you make sure that you are logged in so that your edits don't go into the air in waste. Make sure that you log in your Wikipedia username. So you go to log in, then it allows you to put, let's say, um, let me put my username. Okay, so you can keep it logged in if you want. And this login allows you to log into all the Wikimedia projects with the same username and password. Okay. So when I go to Wikipedia, this is how it looks like. I'm using, uh huh. So maybe I want to write about, I want to edit about, let's say, Gifty Auntie. Give the auntie. So I'm going to give the auntie's article. Have you seen the give the auntie's article? So you go to any article, example, give the auntie art article like this. And maybe I want to edit something. I can just go to the edit button. Maybe I, have, I want to add an information about her. Okay. If you have an information that you wish for us to add about her, you can show us. But I'll just go to the edit. I'm just showing you practically like how to navigate it. You go to the edit. So once I go to the edit, you see, it's now allowing me to edit. You see. So make sure that you, you are using the visual editor. If you see something like this, then you are using the source editor. This, what, this at first put a lot of people off from editing, but now there's this interface that looks like um, a Word document. So it's always the visual editor. So I'm going back to the visual editor because that's what I prefer. Okay, so this is it. So maybe I want to add um, an information. Maybe I want to add an information here. I'll just add, okay? 
let's say I'm I'm not writing the right information, so I'm reversing. I'm just showing you. So let's say I type something. I'm adding some more information to the introduction. So once I add that information, I need to make sure that I add a citation to the statement that I've added. So let's say this is a statement that I've added. I need to add a citation. So I'll go to site. Once I go to site, I'll need to pick the website link. So let's say if I've picked this website link here, I need to paste it here and generate it. Then I insert it. So you see that it's giving me number six. Okay. It's as simple as that. As that. So you can start ed your editing journey by just adding some small information about something to an existing article. And then after that, you publish it. But I'm not going to publish it. But when you publish, it always asks you, what have you done? So let's say I've added, added content. Or you can write, or added content and citation. Then you click, this is a minor edit. Then you publish it. But I'm not going to do that because I've not added any, uh, any pop-up content to it. Okay. And there are sections. You're talking about a person's life, education, career, awards, blah, blah, blah. We can add another session. So let's say, what other session do we think is relevant? That's, so to add a session, you put the heading of the session. Let's say, um, um, what, what session should I add to it? Um, Okay, let's say I want to add a session, schools attended. Okay, so I'll highlight the session. Then I'll put this as a heading. Once I put it as a heading, this is how the interface. So it's, it's so simple, just like a word, Google Doc. If you know how to use a Google Doc, this is how simple it is. Then now I'll put my blah, 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 blah. Add my citation. Blah, 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 blah. Paste it. Generate a code. Put it there. Do you get it? And then I can publish. Okay. If I want to insert a, a picture, so I'll, I'll move it. If I want to insert a picture, you go to insert, it says image. So if there are articles that, there are a lot of articles there that do not have pictures. So you can set and add an, an image. So this allows you to search for images on Wikimedia Commons or you upload them directly from your laptop. If the image belongs to you, I would say that you can go ahead and upload from your laptop because it will say it's your own work. Okay, if it doesn't belong to you, that means you need to go through a process. And that one we'll talk about it later because of copyright issues. Okay, so we want a gifty auntie. This picture you see on gifty auntie, we went to take it during our Founders Day campaign, and she used to have some old picture that was not nice. We tried to update it for her, so I went. I went with the photographer to go and take that picture of her. So it gives the auntie. So when I click give the auntie, let's see if the pictures, okay. So these are the pictures that we took. So the pictures that behind, this was the old picture that used to be there, but now we have a beautiful give the auntie's picture on Wikipedia. Okay, so these are the pictures that shows up. So if I want to add one more picture, I can add it to the article. So I say, use this image. Then it says, what caption? So I want to caption and give the anti. And look for a pop appropriate caption, but I don't have one right now. So it's like I'm adding another picture on the platform. Okay. So these are these are just basic ways. So I'll go to read. I don't want to, I don't want to publish the whole thing. So <laughs> the changes I've made. So um, I'll go back to read. 
and then it comes back to the, the way that it is. And if you want to start a new article and you're not sure, like you are seeing this article, if you want to write an article about a person who is has similar background like Wikipedia, just, you can just look at if this anti's article and look at the model it was created and use that same model. I mean, there's no like just look at the same model that was maybe a little bit background, then personal life and education and career. And if you are not sure, you can always start in your sandbox. So this is a sandbox. Okay, the sandbox allows you to write articles in a space where like, you know, so I have this template that allows me to choose. It's not everybody who will see this, but it allows me to choose whether I want to write about a person or a place or an economy and gives me the, the template. Okay, so I'll put the title here. Let's see. Who do I want to write about? This is John Marks. So this is, <laughs> this is how your sandbox will look like, okay? But because I'm using a template, it has given me early life characters, it has given me the building blocks already. So it's telling me, this is how I'm, I'm writing about a person. Okay, so this is how I'm writing about it. Early life, career, awards, see also any references. So it has given me the format. So all that I need to do is to just start writing. John Marks is a popular, let's say footballer, blah, 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 blah. Add your citations, blah, blah, blah. When you come to early life, you, you type. You come to career, you type. But I'll show you how to add a heading, okay? You can add a heading, let's say, we added a heading, schools attended. The person that has gone to schools, <laughs> a lot of schools, you can do school. So like I showed you, you've gotten a heading, okay? So even if you don't have the template, this is just how simple it is to get all this template. So you can start in your sandbox and then let someone review it for you. And then, um, Okay. Is there anyone who have a question? Yes, I have a question. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a beautiful, um, you know, uh, the session that we are having, and I'm learning a lot. But I would wish I want to ask first. Yeah. And I hope we'll have a session where you take us through how to do this one, like specifically. Yes. Well, because it seems like um, we are getting to the end and then it's like we are just moving fast. So and I would I'll look forward to a more slower version so that we can actually grasp, you know, the skills that you want us to build um, working yes. on Wikipedia. That's just what I'm thank you for answering. So now my next question is um are you allowed to write about yourself in, on Wikipedia? If not, why not? And secondly, um, you have to write about other people. Okay, what if they don't want to be on the Wikipedia space? Okay, so then that leads me to my next question. Can you actually speak to them if they want to be on the space and get the information from them and put it out there, which I think is a brilliant idea. But then in that case, how do you now reference them? Because when they ask for a citation, there's one you're getting it from the horse's mouth. So what, how would you reference that? So those would be my questions, thank you. Wow, thank you. So let me get your question. <laughs> That's a brilliant question. So your first question is, um, um, how do you, do you write about yourself on Wikipedia? No, we are talking about by us, yeah. You can not write about yourself unless someone writes about you. But before you get to be written about, you have to make sure that the subject that we are writing about, the person we are writing about is notable and has publications or reference. Okay, so if it's a notable figure that we want to write about, it doesn't just end there. Does the person have publications that backs? Because all that we are seeing in the write-up needs to be backed by reference. Because Wikipedia is verifiable. It needs to, all the information needs to be verified. Without a reference, we will not be able to verify those information. And that's why sometimes in Africa, there are lots of people that are married to Wikipedia page. But the reason why it's so difficult 
for us to write about them because there's no publications about them. There was a project that we're doing with National Film Authority, NFA, and what they sought to do was to, what they sought to do was to get a lot of these um, um, movie actors, actresses, um, the people behind the scene, you know, the cameraman, the guys writing the scripts and all of that documented because they feel like they need to project them. They're doing amazing work over the years. A lot of people are doing amazing work over the years. And one of the biggest challenges that we saw in that project is that some of them, we couldn't write about them because there's no information published anywhere about them. And that's the challenge, okay? We don't find this information. Um, we don't find this information anywhere to, 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 to write about them. So it's, it becomes a challenge. To, to write those stories about those people. And you also talked about, uh, what was the next question? I read? Yeah, like, can you have, um, can you have people that you want to write about give you the information? And you don't if the information is coming. Okay. Okay, I get it. You don't necessarily need to ask anybody information to me, from, like, because the information are already, information that are out there, already they are not information that i hate it's not like you're bringing someone's secret out that's why we've said notability because anybody who is notable it's assumed that their information are out there they are public figures they are information that you know it's like we want to know about the president of each of the country we need to ask them any permission because their information are informations that are in the public already okay so what we need to do is to to find the sources online. We don't need to ask them for the references and all of that. There was one uh, artist that wanted us to write about them and they brought their own write-up. <laughs> they brought their own write-up that we should use that write-up. And when we brought the, when we brought the article, they were like, no, they, they don't, want the one that we have written this is how they want it meanwhile what you have written a lot of it are not um, backed by any publication what we have written is what we have found on the internet like the research that we have done and, and based on the information we got you know this is what we have come up with. okay then not so important yeah then yeah sorry let me cut you i'm sorry i'm doing this but then it doesn't make wikipedia so flexible in the sense that uh you're looking for people who are already made why isn't wikipedia looking for um early career people that they can also project so that they can you know get access to platforms that they need to you know um blossom or flourish okay and that way uh because Wikipedia is editable, any information that is out there about them, although not verifiable, but with time, you get references to edit and attach those information. So I don't know if my question makes sense, but it makes sense. Uh, I feel like, yeah, I feel like some of us that are upcoming that even need the push, that need the visibility, the public, like publicity of our works and stuff. Wiki should have a platform for people like us and uh, not focus only on the already made people. Okay. Uh huh. So, please, uh, what do you have to say about that? Okay. I'll let Pamela, Pamela, you let me give you the floor so that you can explain. So, Pamela will take over. Um, yeah. Um, thank you for that question. It's a like a really valid question because why won't Wikipedia allow? and come with people and give them the opportunity. It's a valid question that like we would have to look into. But um, one thing that we have to also have in mind is that um, Wikipedia is not like a PL tool or an advertising platform. Other than that, there will be like lots of articles and then people will be paying others to create profiles for them. And would have scammers and all of those people having profiles, right? So the platform is actually looking for those who are 
invited people like this for their work to be on the platform because some of the things that can happen if everybody or make fire people, people who are beginning a lot of platform is that there's going to be um like we could even have cameras on the platform. And based on information that people use on the platform, it can get the Wikimedia Foundation in trouble. Because there are articles that have slandered the foundation in several lawsuits for their questionable articles. And that can go to explain, maybe not in a whole, but the reason why they are very strict on the level of the person that has to be there. Other than that, it would have been very good that they give the opportunity. But the consequences, I believe, far outweighs, um, you know, the fact that they have to be someone there because they're coming up. So that is um, an explanation I can give to so that. Maybe you has, uh, really have something to add to that. Thank you very much, Pamela. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I hope it made a little bit of sense. Yeah, to, but a lot to, of things. Yeah. Uh, Ruby, there's someone whose hand is raised. I don't know if the person wants to ask a question. No, I think that was Pamela. Hello, Ruby. So, uh, is it Ruby is maybe cut out of the internet or something? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, but can everyone hear me? I can hear you. Okay. So yes, Pamela, we can hear you. Yeah, it should be here still. Okay, so if she's not here, um, then let me fill up the space before she comes back. Does anybody else, did she, um, did she answer all your questions? Yes, please, she did. Thank oh, you. Okay. So Ruby, let me know if you're back, okay? So I just would like to find out if anybody has questions um, related to the presentation. Any more questions? Um, Babna, sorry, please, aside the questions, uh, are there additional information you would want to share? I don't want to take too much of the time. I wanted to say something or ask you something. Oh, okay. If you want to, if you have questions, you can go ahead. Okay. So yeah. uh, Ruby made mention of some of the opportunities that I have, that I have a lot of opportunities that we can tap from, apart from the educational one, getting, you know, scholarship. Someone, she mentioned someone got a scholarship from mm -hmm. undergraduate straight to the PhD level. Mm -hmm. What are what are some of the other um, opportunities that ladies, especially from Africa, can tap into? Okay, so in terms of the opportunities, I think they are enormous, okay? So aside from these um, scholarship thing, if you are into academics, maybe you want to progress in the area of education. 
um, it is really helpful, like for me personally. Um, so since I have been in school, right, there are times that um, there are classes that are tough. And when it gets to the end of semester and you're asked to work on a project, you'd have to think on who, on what projects to do and all that. But because I edit Wikipedia, it always comes to the rescue. I this Wikipedia, I have I already have the skills. I'll just create something around Wikipedia and then I'll send it to my professor. And they are like, they're always like, oh, this is a good idea, you can go ahead. And it comes so easy to me because I don't have to do extra work. Because I already have the skills, I just put some things together. And it makes the semester very easy for me because that is one class assignment gone. Then I have time to concentrate on the ones that I can't use Wikipedia in this area. So it's been really helpful in that part. So and in as much as you are, you know, working on it as your class project, you are still making an impact by contributing to the platform because at the end of the day, sometimes my my project is like writing a new article about a topic. The professor accepts it. I do the article. I share the link with him. Or her and it's done. And at the same time, I'm contributing to the platform. So it's like using um one stone to kill two beds. Okay. Hello. And yeah, hello. Morning stopped. Hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Come are you done? No. So I heard someone say hello. So I thought. Oh, no problem. Oh. Yeah, Ruby, should I continue or? Yes, please continue. Yeah, you were cut off a bit, so I decided to fill in the void. Um, and also I have made like new connections with people that I never thought like I would have connection with, depending on my area where I am and where they are. And these people are sometimes um organizational leaders, celebrities and all of that. And they know me because of Wikipedia. They know that I edit Wikipedia, I post about it. And then they would need help with editing Wikipedia. After helping them, it doesn't come in the form of money, like monetary value. But then they become your friends. And if you need help or connections or something, because you do something for them for free, they are willing to help you. And I don't want to mention names, but there are some celebrities that when I need help, it's something when I tell them, they just post it on their platform for me for free and they have large followings and I get the results that I need just by being a Wikipedia editor. And I said, we want the connection and um, relationships that comes from being Wikipedia is amazing. And we are not only talking about Connections and relationships with people only in that because they found the Wikipedia movement is worldwide. There's Wikipedia movement in places that you never think about. In France, in Nigeria, in Togo, in like Mexico, in Peru, and all that. So imagine having connections with all of these people just by being an editor, you know, through conferences and all that. And there are conferences in the movement that you can have free scholarships to attend. So if you like to travel and want to put a portfolio of um, partnerships worldwide, then this um, Wikipedia movement is the right um, movement to join because you get to travel a lot, especially if you contribute a lot, it's easier for you to get scholarships to go to Wikimedia Summit, Wikimedia, um, Wikimania, these are all conferences by the moment where volunteers can attend. So it, build, it helps you meet people where you can build long lasting um, business relationships with. So these are some of the things that I've been mentioning. If today is your first time of joining Wikipedia training, don't let it be your last time. Make sure that you use the information. Start editing, join the movement, ask questions, ask for help, and you would see how your life would improve. 
in the next one is just by committing to a free knowledge project like this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pamela. Uh, just a quick one again. Uh, so you've mentioned all of the opportunities, but I didn't hear you mention anything in regards to probably making income out of probably whatever you do, maybe publishing articles. Or I want to know in on, on other platforms, sometimes you can make some small monies from from doing these publications. Is it the same with with Wikipedia? Um. So with Wikipedia, it's not like uh, it doesn't have a money structure or an income structure where you would make money from contributing content. It's a free, I, I hope like maybe mentioned maybe in the beginning, but I wasn't here. So it's a free knowledge platform, which means that it is open for anybody to be able to contribute to. So it's not like a job or a project that you engage in to get paid. And that is where some people get it wrong. The moment they hear you don't get paid to edit Wikipedia, you tune out. But when you start editing and you are committed, the amount of um, advantages or things that you can derive from the platform will far outweigh a little money that if they were to pay you, they would have given you. So it's a free platform, you don't get paid. People who edit on Wikipedia are just volunteers. That's how you call yourselves. And you can also get a job with a Wikimedia Foundation. It's something that most of some of us had the opportunity to taste by volunteering. You can apply for jobs with the main foundation. And then that is where your real cash is going to come. And this is not like small amounts. So it's like commitment. And then not with the idea of reaping something about, of course, we are all humans want to progress. It's about commitment and then getting what you have to get or want to get from the um, movement. So if it's your dream to do this, do it well. And the advantages and all the monies and all the things that you're mentioning will come later. And when it comes, it's not small. Like, I'm not going to brag about it. So yeah, I, I don't know if Ubi has something to add about the payment stuff or income yeah. Um, model. Yeah, I think um, Pamela has said it right. But like we say, you know, the movement is, has this volunteer model. It opens a lot of doors. People have gotten jobs, opportunity, international, wide, global. Even our community members who are volunteers, they eventually got different, different jobs. They are working with different communities. Like um, like Jesse, well, who did a contract with a Code for Africa. Ukola is working with Book Code for Africa. You know, there are jobs that requires the skills. You know that you have because once you are coming in, they expect you that okay, you are going to be trained. So they are they are also once you get to to know these things and you are interested and you are active to contribute and all of that, or you have acquired the skills and all of that, it opens other jobs opportunity for you in the movement. So there's an administrative side of everything that we do. There's a job side of everything that we do, you know? So that side is also there. That gives opportunity to people in the movement. There are short jobs, short contracts. Even in my community, sometimes we want people to come and do jury, maybe for a month, you know, and we pay them, they do the jury. We, we trust their work because we feel like well, they have some experience in the Wikimedia movement. And continuously, there have been males. I'm looking forward to, to a woman who will be a jury. And we, it's so hard to find because we, we realize that the community is full of men and fewer women. And the fewer women are always busy because they, they are, I mean, everybody wants a woman to do something. So these are some of the opportunities. There are, there are awards to be won. There are souvenirs we give out to volunteers at each event. If there's funding for that event, you see that there are souvenirs that we give out to them to, or awards to contributors who are doing little, little things, you know. And some our competitions are big. You can get like laptops and all of that. So the opportunity to take some leadership roles in the community, volunteer leadership roles, and, and that gets you to work with 
people in a global community with diverse backgrounds and all of these things and added to your CV, it shows people that you have that multicultural skills of working with different people across different groups, different continents, okay? And there are mm. different opportunities that come up <laughs> as and when. There's one guy, he had the opportunity to go and do some job in a different country. So even there are some of our volunteers now, they are working in Germany just because of Wikidata. They are working in Germany. Other people are working with the Wikimedia Foundation, which is a mother organization. Imagine if you are working with Wikimedia Foundation, they'll pay you in dollars because you are working with a US organization. Okay, so there are so many opportunities. Yeah. We don't find a lot of women in the space. So imagine if you are among the few women who are doing amazing work, you will rise up so quickly. Okay. Thank you very much, Ruby. Thank you so much. I'm actually, I asked this question because most of us youth today, we are only looking to commit our um, resources or our time to platforms that we'll get money from. But what we fail to understand is that sometimes the benefits are not only in monetary terms. Like all that you have mentioned are opportunities that we could tap into if only um, we, we, we learn to volunteer wholeheartedly, okay? Yeah. And that is one thing that I do, and I wish to uh, encourage every woman on this platform this morning to also, you know, imbibe the same kind of you know, uh, character or attitude towards works like this. So thank you so much for the elaboration, Ruby and Pamela, and for uh, more insights. Thank you. Thank you, too. And we are so happy to have you, and we hope that, you know, next year when we are meeting again, you are the trainer, you know, the chief trainer of the community. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be taking you through tips and tricks. There are even beautiful tools that you can use to easily get edited on Wikipedia. Now, there are lots of tools that are being developed, you know. We will show you from time to time. We'll create some educational videos that you can self-learn as well. And then you can have some office hours to, you know, and, and I think the last time we learned about Wikidata, Wikidata, how to edit on Wikidata, but um, it looks like time is fast spent. A lot of us are already tired and hungry and looking forward to our lunch. So I wouldn't want to bore you so much, but this is just the way the interface is. And if you want to create a new Wikidata item, um, let's say someone said I should create a Wikidata item for the person. So let's say this is a Wikidata item. Um, what's the name of the item that you said? I okay. It's a Ghana National Chamber of Commerce. Ghana National Chamber. This is the last one, then we'll be done, okay? Of pharmacy. Okay, so we want to create this. When we searched for it, it's not on Wikidata. Hmm. No, it's still loading. Let me see. So you always search for the article. Okay, it's not on it. Okay, so when if it's not there, you click on create new item. Have you seen it? Ruby, please, you're muted. Oh, sorry. So when you create it, this is how it is. It's, saying, it's telling you that the language is English now, okay? So you enter the label. So is the Ghana, oh, I should have copied it, created. Because I didn't find it in, I have to create a new item. That's why I went here, create new item. So Wikidata is very simple. One guy in Nigeria, he said, We'll be struggling with Wikipedia. When he found out Wikidata, he started contributing to Wikidata alone. And today, he's he said he is the Wikidata um, uh, receptionist. The, most of the Wikimedia job are remote jobs, okay? Like, and they give you contracts, like con volunteer contracts and all that. He's working with the Wikidata community as a like anybody who needs help with Wikidata. They help. He's in Nigeria. Just by his contribution, he's gotten a job there. You know, and he can do it with his other job because it doesn't require all his time, and they will pay him a lot of money. 
by just doing that. Because if they get a job at the foundation level, that one is a different level. Okay, so, and he even came up with a project to, to sort of like bring mentorship and skills to Africa, you know. So you can even come up with different projects on your own as you acquire the skill. So Ghana, um, let me see the name, Ghana National, Chamber of Pharmacy. So can someone search what exactly this is? Ghana National Chamber. Let me just check Google. So I'll go to Google and search what it is so that I can get a description for it. Ghana National Chamber of Pharmacy. So because this is wiki data, it's it's doesn't it's not like as rigid as Wikipedia and the English Wikipedia and all of that. Okay, so what is it about? I want to get a free description. The National National Team of Pharmacy from there. Next business one two. So it says in twenty ten to advocate, connect, inform, and fight for pharmaceutical. So I'll copy this brief description. I'll improve it later. Let me see if it will get there. I will, I'll, I can always edit the description, but I hope that it's not too long. <laughs> Is there any other name apart from the Ghana National Chamber of Pharmacy that people know this for? No, there's not. So I'll create. Okay, the description is too long. So I need to find a very um, short, the, the description is so long. So what is that? It's, it's um, let me just shorten it. I'll, I'll edit it later on. Because it's a wiki, you can always edit it. So let's say, I want to get this out of the way. Okay. So let me see if it's better. Okay, so once you create it like this, you can create about women, you can create about anything, organizations, you know, books and all of that. Once you create this, you add statements, okay? So whenever you want to add a statement, add this from here. So I want to add this, it's an instance of, if we say instance of then, I'm, I mean, it's not a human. So it's, um, if it's a human being, I might about, I would have written human, but because it's not a human being, it's not a human being. So it's an organization or something like that, organization or a pharmaceutical company or something. Organization, okay. So I'll publish. So once I publish, I get an edit. Then I, I'll add another statement. Country. So which country is it? Ghana. I publish. Then established year official. So maybe I can add official website. You see, then this is the official website. Um, then I published. Then um, inception, when did it start? So you see, some is giving me even ideas, okay? When did it start? So it says it started in um, 2013. 2013. So yeah. Yes, I'm doing something. <laughs> so do you see how easy it is? 
Okay. So if it's a human being, you can even look at existing Wikipedia um, Wikidata article about someone, then it gives you prompts about what you're supposed to add. And each edit I did, I've gotten an edit. Each edit I've done, it's an edit. And to be an active volunteer, Wikimedia volunteer, you need five edits a month. So if I def do this five times, I've done an edit. If, I'm not, if I want to do more, I can continue to do it. And the more items I create, it's to my credit. Because I, I created it, it's to my credit. So you can look for organizations that are not on Wikidata and write about them. But we'll have a more practical session. That one, today wanted to give you the understanding because we realized that the understanding is very important to help people to prepare their minds. And then we'll be exploring more of the practical session. We'll have office hours where we are just supporting people. There are even ways to translate. Okay, the articles that you can translate and all of that. Yeah, so existing articles that you can do all of this information here you can add it you can even write it in your language where you add labels in your language if you, but we'll get there um, i don't know if anybody has any more questions as we wrap up and go for our lunch break but um I, I I think I want to bring the session to a close so that we can all have some rest. We've been online since 10 a.m. Since 9 a.m. Wow. Wikipedia trade is gonna be long, especially if we are doing an introduction section, but subsequent sections will will go more practical. But in the meantime, let's create some um Wikidata item. Um, we did some article list on MetaWiki. Let me see here, voice something. Hmm. I'll find it and put it on the WhatsApp group. I hope we are all on the WhatsApp group. You can join the WhatsApp group and then we'll share the respective links to the meta page. But if we, if anybody have anything to say, we can say it and wrap up. Anybody has anything to say? Someone put anything in the chat. Um, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, so I have a question. Okay. Regarding this um, Women for Sustainability Africa. Yes. Is it only limited to women in Ghana or Africa as a whole? Africa as a whole. So okay. Africans from all African countries are welcome because that's the whole point. We want to um, impact women across Africa. So. Um, Anita, I don't know if he, she's there to talk about it, but I think the whole target is in Africa. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. So you're welcome. Um, if you want to yeah. join that, do you have the, how do we join? Please, please. So I'll leave I'll Hello, leave okay. the, the facilitator. Thank you, Anita, for having me. Thank you so much. It's been a, a pleasure. I'm so happy. Mm -hmm do this yeah yeah thank you ruby for accepting our invitation to to train us um i believe this has been very educative and very insightful even though we've gone beyond that time i apologize sincerely i know being online for a long time can be a bit stressful but i believe we've learned something new and that uh, we've all been educated so women for sustainability africa it's not only limited to women in ghana but it's um it's across all the countries in Africa. Okay, so Nigeria, Zambia, Uganda, K 
Kenya, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, everywhere to go. I mean, everywhere. So um, I want as many women that can join this movement as, as you know, as, as possible. So I would also need you to, you know, invite your friends in Nigeria to join the platform. I'll be happy if you can leave your contacts in the chat box. I would add you to the WhatsApp page for Women for Sustainability. I'll equally share all our social media handles with you as well so that you can join the page, like it, and equally share with other women. Okay, so um, I believe that is it for today. I'm, I'm very grateful to have Pamela joining all the way from US as well. Yeah. Pamela, thank you very much for yeah, for joining. Mama. And Mama. Yeah. yeah, so thank you very much to Ebegiku from Nigeria. We are so grateful to have you all. Success, Great, Grace had to join another call, so she's left. Um, Grace, everyone, Abigail, we are all grateful to, to have you. Linda from Paul, thank you so much for, for joining. MFA, thank you so much yeah. for, for coming. Ruby, thank you once again for, for having this time to train us. And we'll keep you all informed and posted on our next event. So um, let's, let's be active on our social media pages and our WhatsApp page, WhatsApp page as well. Um, Pamela, please, do you have any closer remarks as well to share? No, um, I think that that will be all. That'll be all. Uh, okay. I've also shared a list of articles for Wikidata. So those who want to start creating Wikidata items, as you can see on my screen, I've shared it there. You can start with these names. These people are not on Wikidata. So we, let's um, start. But if you don't have a Wikipedia article, create one and send it to us, uh, your, your Wikipedia account. Okay. So let's get on the WhatsApp group and then let's provide you uh, extra support. Thank you all so much. All the best. Mommy, I don't need. Okay, thank you all. And thank you for joining once again. Do have a blessed weekend. Bye. What? Not to take a group picture, but everybody's gone already. <laughs> Oh, okay. Let me see. Um, the body, the body. Bye. Let's take a good picture. Bye. Bye. Oh, we didn't get everybody. Bye. 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 Okay, good. Linda, MFA. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.